Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. And now, here's our host, Dr. Vanessa Ancelone. Welcome, dear listener, to Kardec Radio. Today is a happy show. It's all about energy management and habit creation. Topics that we have been discussing in spiritist circles since the very beginnings. Actually, the codifier himself, Alan Kardec, in a comment to question 685 in the Spirit's book, he mentions precisely that habits are actually the goal of education. An education that is based on the creation of habits. Question, how do we get there? How do we create new habits? Science can bring us good news about some of the insights on how to create new habits, but it's not easy. Many people claim that they want to change, but they don't like to change. They want to change, but they don't like to experience changes. So how do we actually create new habits to progress? Progress is inevitable. It's a law of life and new habits are in great demand when we need to progress. But how do we open ourselves to create new habits? George Cow is here with us to tell us about how to create new habits. Not only that, but he's also going to address one of the main points in that process, which is energy management. We live in a society that is so uh, busy and stressed out that many people feel depleted from energy and it's amazing so paradoxical because we know so much about energy and how to get new energy renew your energy through supplements and food and rest and so much science has been giving us so many resources but why don't we still know quite yet how to manage our energy levels so important so vital he talks about the law of preservation. So George Cow is here with us to share with us much of his expertise on these both topics and much more. He is the program director at the Enlightened Business Academy, chief officer at Friends of Your Highest Work, and business coach and marketing consultant. He has been previously at Kardec Radio in a Spiritist show, uh, a program that we entitled Spiritism in America, and it's right there on demand for you to listen to it. So you can listen to Kardec Radio shows on demand through iTunes, at kardecradio.com, and also at blogtalkradio.com slash Radio. So we want to share with you that Kardec Radio is with you 24-7. Anytime during the day or night. You don't need even to have a radio apparatus. You just need a computer, a tablet, a phone. It's very easy, very simple. You can listen to it anywhere you are in this world. By the way, there are more than 61 countries listening to Kardec Radio. And we can get much more of that if you participate and share the news. The Kardec Radio is here to nourish your soul. You know that there is a sister radio, Bizarre Online Web Radio, located in Miami, Florida. And they are accessible at www.spiritist.com. And you can listen to beautiful programs, not only Kardec Radio's programs, they're retransmitted three times a day, every day, but also programs in Spanish and in Portuguese. These programs are kindly prepared and directed by the friend Luis Salazar. And if you want to read the Spiritist magazine, free digitally, online, anywhere, or if you want to print it, of course you can. You can have a print out magazine in your hand. Just go to the spiritismagazine.com website and get to know more about how to access your digital form of the magazine or print out the magazine for you anywhere in this world. We have a partnership with HP Mag Cloud, making it easier to print 
the magazine for everybody. And you know, Divaldo Franco, the renowned medium and spirit speaker, is coming to the United States. And he is going to be next week in several locations in the United States, beginning with the very, the very Chicago. Chicago is going to host Divaldo on February 21st with a special seminar on psychological disorders and obsession at the Daystar Center. And you can get to know more information at www.spiritistsocietyofchicago.org. On February 23rd and the 24th, Divaldo Franco will be in New Jersey for a two-day seminar. The name of the event is Inner Journey. And if you want to know more information, please go to www.tristatefederation.org. And finally, on February 25th, Divaldo Franco will lead a special seminar entitled The Dawn of a New Era in the San Francisco area, California. If you want to know more information, please go to the email jangelis.jazz, J-A-S-S, at gmail.com. If by any chance you missed anything we said here, just send us an email at cardecradio at gmail.com, and we'll be happy to share the news about Divaldo Franco's coming to the East Coast. In March, he's going to be in South Florida in a special conference under the theme of Mediumship, a Human Attribute. Just go to the spiritistfederation.us website to get to know more about the very event we are mentioning here. You see, there are so many good things happening around the world and many ways to help people enlighten their minds and live a better life. Talking about living a better life, who doesn't want to be happy? And that's how we are going to set the tone of Kardec Radio today with Chapter 3 of the book, Happy Life by Joana de Angelis through the mediumship of Divaldo Franco. Let's listen to this. Go to our first break. When we come back, our dear George Cow is here with us to tell us more about energy management and habit creation. Drench your mind in study as much as possible. Study frees the mind from ignorance and develops discernment. Study and work are the wings that further evolution. Knowledge is the message of life. Learning is not limited to the classroom. Life itself is an open book that teaches those willing to learn. We will return to our program after these messages. A new masterpiece has just been released by Edisei of America, Memoirs of a Suicide by Yvonne Ferreira. Under the guidance of the spirit Leon Dennis, the spirit author Camilo Castello Branco, using the pen name Camilo Cândido de Botelho, describes to the medium Yvonne A. Ferreira his dreadful experience after discarnated by suicide. The book entails invaluable instruction demonstrating the greatness of the divine mercy toward repentant suicides and providing them with the opportunity to understand the universe and life in its fullest dimension. The beginnings of planet Earth, the evolution of the human being, the immortality of the soul. Christ's conscious morality and other relevant themes are presented for the understanding that no attempt at moral growth will work if we remain imprisoned in self-ignorance. A completing of this work shows that there is a road of reconstruction for those who repent. There is always hope because rehabilitation is possible. Buy your copy today at www.edisayofamerica.com.
Kardec Radio, live every Saturday at 11 a.m. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. The International Spiritist Council is organizing and promoting the 7th World Spiritist Congress, which will be held in Havana, Cuba, on March 23rd through the 25th of 2013. The Congress theme will be Charity and Spiritual Education in Building a World of Peace, 150 Years of the Gospel According to Spiritism. For more information, please visit number 7 cem.org And now we return to our program. Dear listener, we are here to talk about one of the most important topics in spiritism. We are here to progress and spiritism is here to help us progress. It's about creating new habits because how can we progress if we don't create new habits? And how do we manage our energy? to go through the process of changes and transformation. We often talk about the inner transformation, which encompasses inevitably the creation of new habits. But the question is, how do we do it? We have brought here a good friend of Kardec Radio, George Cow, who is also the program director at the Enlightened Business Academy. He is the chief officer at Friends of Your Highest Work, and business coach, and also a marketing consultant. He was previously interviewed at Kardec Radio in a program about spiritism in America, and he's here today at Kardec Radio with us to enlighten our minds with his very good tips and hints about how to manage our energy and create new habits. Thank you so much, George, for being with us today at Kardec Radio. Thank you, Vanessa. It's an honor to be here. I know you're in California, so we thank you very much for being with us at an earlier time from California. So, George, before we begin, we'd like to share with the listeners your proposal about writing below the chat line. Sure, yeah. If those of you who are, um, whether you're listening live or you're listening to this on a podcast, which I often do, uh, please feel free to scroll down on the Blog Talk Radio for this show. By the way, those who uh, blogtalkradio.com slash Kardec Radio, if you click through to this particular show and if you scroll down, there should be a comments area. And I, uh, I, I often give talks where we use social media like this, so I would, I would uh, just really enjoy seeing any comments any of you have on about this um, particular show and, and what inspired you, what particularly, particular concept or idea you want to remember. That'd be great. Thank you so wonderful, much. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So, George, we know we can tell people to find you on Facebook where you leave a lot of tips and hints about it. You have a Facebook for your your personal one and your professional one. If you want to um, give them the... the, the the HTML route for, for, for their reference. Would you mind doing this now for us, please? Oh, sure, absolutely. Those who uh, like to serve Facebook, uh, you can find me at facebook.com slash George Cow. That's probably the best place to go, and, and uh, that that's spelled facebook.com slash G-E-O-R-G-E-K-A-O. I often like to share inspiring tips there, so uh, mm-hmm. feel free to go there and, and check them out. And and that's so beautiful because one of the main things that uh, I've observed you do as a coach is that you help people also get a sense of balance in their lives. Can you tell us more about that work you've been doing? Absolutely. Well, um, I, I do a number of things. I mean, uh, one thing that I that I do is I'm a teacher uh, at a particular um, online training school called the Enlightened Business Academy and. There we are uh, teaching um, new entrepreneurs how to create a successful online business that changes the world, transforms the world in a positive way. Um, but uh, uh, I also am a uh, life coach or a personal development uh, teacher, and uh, I, I have developed a series of practices that help people to live a life of um, what we might call spiritual success, Right, which is the most important type of success there is, is a, a life of um, where we are actually growing our souls. Uh, and we are, of course, uh, as we 
we all know from Spiritism, when we follow the laws of God, um, we find happiness, <laughs> not just in the next life, but we find happiness here. here. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. That comment is amazing. And it reminds us of the the fact that you are bridging it up, the two concepts. How did you get to to that um, addition in your life with the Spiritist uh, teachings? Uh, you know, it was just a, f- a couple of years ago um, when Naso Lar, the movie, mm-hmm. was about to be released. I had found a, um, a link to the trailer for, mm-hmm. for Naso Lar, the movie, and it was so fascinating that mm-hmm. I thought, gosh, this is, this is so right on. And then I um, did some research and found, uh, uh, you know, Chico Javier, mm-hmm. uh, bless, his, bless his soul. Um, yeah. I found, you know, the, the, the um, English translation of Naso Lar. Highly recommended everyone to go read that. Um, changed my life. I felt like it, I thought this is the most um, uh, this is so, this is the most truth in one <laughs> book that I have read. I felt like I've read in, in, in quite some time in a way that's very entertaining. Uh, you know? uh-huh. And so that really got me going. I started reading the Spirits book, and that I I was just astounded by um, how much. Uh, wisdom, how much, how much a sense of truth that I could feel within me that this is, this is, this is so um, enlightening and that make this makes so much sense. So I think from the spirits book that really has uh, and 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 eventually thanks mm-hmm. to your work and the, the work of uh, the Cardiac Radio team, I found I found you guys, you know, Cardiac Radio, That's and wonderful. that has it's really been helpful, right? So I think I think for a lot of us to stay um, on top of what uh, what how these concepts can be applied in our lives. Oh, so that's wonderful. Thank you, George. Thank you. And when, you know, you you tell people how to live a more balanced life, but mm-hmm. when we talk about balance, we're talking about taking care of the body and spirit. And there is a very passage in this gospel according to spiritism, telling people in that very order, take care of your body and spirit because we are incarnated. We're talking about the importance of energy management as well. So, but it's so hard, right, George? How do actually people get an easier way through their management of their own energy? Yeah. So, um, energy management. I mean, m- many of us know some of the things that we should be doing in our lives to maintain a. Um, optimized level of energy so we can do our work in the world with joy and with um, consistency uh, and but but the thing is why don't we do them right and yes. and I have one answer for that <laughs> we don't do them because of habits mm. because basically we are each walking around as a bundle of habits and we may want to do something. We may, may, some of us make New Year's resolutions. We decide, we commit to change, but we cannot change because you, you might say that it's not our fault. It's basically <laughs> we are already living our habits, and there's, you know, you don't change because you haven't, you haven't designed a change plan around your habits, and therefore you keep doing whatever you've always done. Mm. That's what. That's why uh, habit change is so important. So, I always like to kind of address that topic of habit change um, mm-hmm. as the foundation of, of, of true change, you know, and, and really true management of your energy. Yeah, so one thing is connected to the other then. Yes, absolutely. Uh, mm-hmm. you're, you're, and and uh, it's quite a profound comment there because to change habits successfully, we also need to manage our energy. Mm-hmm. And so that's this is why the habit change and energy management is really, it goes together because the first habits that I recommend that we change are about our energy management. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Interesting. And, you know, you're talking about habit creation. And as we mentioned at the beginning of the program, in a comment to question 685 of the Spirit's book, Kardec addressed the the fact that the true education is the sum of acquired habits. So education relies on creation of habits. Yeah. I'm not so sure people are fully aware of it nowadays because we think it, education is about knowledge, acquisition of knowledge. And Kardec goes deeper uh, telling us that education, he proposes that education is actually 
the the acquisition of ha- new habits. Mm, that's true education, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So in that regard, some people, some experts say, oh, you need 21 days to actually form a new habit. Some other people say maybe 40 days. And is is there actually a rule in that regard? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, and some people say longer. Some people say six months. <laughs> um, so let me let me let me kind of begin by saying that habit creation has such profound importance um, for for our the quality of our life now, but also for the next life uh, and the next lives. And I think this is why Kardec emphasizes at such a point. I, I, I remember um, uh, on, on one of the Kardec radio shows some time ago, there was talk about an, um, Andre Luis's Ten Commandments that yeah. he shared. Yes. Um, yes. It was profound. It was amazing. And as I was listening to those Ten Commandments by and, Andre Luis, I thought, these are all habits. <laughs> and <laughs> and we, when, we, when, we think, when we hear spiritual ideas, I think sometimes we may feel intimidated by them. Mm. You know, we think, how can we possibly live up to these Ten Commandments, for example? Uh, these are so subtle, and, and they're so um, dramatically different, perhaps, from what, how we may be living. You know, mm. Some of us more dramatic than others, right? Exactly. So my encouragement, just to kind of get going on this topic, is, is, is habit creation is like you are building a house for every habit you create, it's like building a house. And the question uh, that you ask, uh, Vanessa, is does it take 21 days to build a house or 40 <laughs> days to build a house or six months to build a house? And, and my answer is it depends on a couple factors. One, mm-hmm. is it, it depends on how whether you designed the house before you started building it or mm-hmm. did you just start throwing some wood and bricks together <laughs> in <laughs> hopes that you'll build a house. Did you design it and also mm-hmm. – um, how fervently are you working at that particular house to, design, mm. to, to, to build it? So, in other words, changing our lives is not some. It's not just reading a book and talking to some people yeah. and going, you know, going to meetings and then we expect our lives to change. Changing our lives is about serious design of whatever change it is we want. Yeah. And um, and and the the hope that we have is that. We can change our lives because habit creation is basically like installing software into our brains. Mm-hmm. That's that's what it is. It's not just about reading, but it's about installing, um, you know, on a conscious level. What? How do we want to behave differently? And uh, and the, the wonderful thing about the, the time we have on this planet is that we can consciously remove. You know, destructive emotions one by one. We can consciously um, install uh, beneficial patterns in our lives one by one. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think we we keep going forever, as we know. Exactly. So we are perfect. You know? But but George, as you're saying this, you are also in the business world because you're a coach in in that regard. So, you know, we are here at Kardec Radio. Our audience is very open minded regarding this and very permeable to these teachings. How do you see the possible changes that are already happening in the business world? Oh, it, you know, what? thankfully, um, I think a lot of people are being influenced by, uh, you know, the New Age movement, for example, mm-hmm. has been going on for decades, mm-hmm. and especially in, in the United States and, you know, in, in Europe. Um, and, the, you know, that New Age movement of we are all one, and uh, that, and also the environmental movement, uh-huh. right, has influenced our our idea that hey, we are all one in the sense that what we do to the environment affects all of us. You know, global warming is an example. When, you know, if one country pollutes, the whole world uh, is 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 damaged, is harmed. You know, mm-hmm. and so because of some of these movements, and um, and uh, we we you know business people are starting to see that. Wait a second. Uh, my business is not just about me and my profits and my even not just about my customers, but it's about how it influences the community and how it influences my uh, my employees and how it influences the world. The way every single business operates is a model. Really, every single business is a model for the world 
for how business should operate. Mm -hmm. You know how when we look at one another's behavior, if someone does something and then someone else does the same thing, it makes it more okay for us to do it. So this is why it's so important. You know, whatever business we work in, I know a lot of us are, um, you know, perhaps we're employees of of, of companies. We are also models within that company exactly. of how employees should be. <laughs> you know, it makes so, sense. Yeah. It makes sense to us. So, uh, George, we're going to give a short break. When we come back, we would like to know more. There is actually a question by one of the listeners who sent it to us by email. We'll be right back with you. Okay. Wonderful. We will return to our program after these messages. Kardec Radio, live every Saturday at 11 a.m. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. In Life Goes On, in an inspiring novel by the spirit author Andrea Louise. This book is a spirit's description of the individual after discarnating, and it shows that the lives of the inhabitants of the beyond are related to their mental state. In a novel with 26 chapters, it tells the story of real characters who, upon discarnating, receive the help of spirit friends. These friends encourage them to renew themselves through study and work in order to prepare them to reveal their lives and understand schemes of the past thereby enabling them to follow new directives of behavior. This volume teaches us the practice of self-examination in a certainty that, in conformity with the laws of God, life continues full of hope and labor, progress and accomplishment after death. Buy your copy today at www.edseyofamerica.com. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. Spiritism for Everyone, the online study of the Spirit's Book and the Gospel According to Spiritism. Spiritism for Everyone meets every Wednesday evening and Saturday morning using the latest technology in web conferencing. You can join in from any computer in the comfort of your home or office, no matter where you are in the U.S. or the world. Spiritism for Everyone is open, free, and requires no registration. To access the web live meetings, go to www.spiritus.us. Spiritism for Everyone is a program of the United States Spiritus Council. And now we return to our program. Dear listener, we are here talking about energy management and habit creation with our dear friend, George Cow. And we want to remind you that, you know, Kardec Radio is being retransmitted at, to our sister radio, Bizarre Online Web Radio. And you can also listen to beautiful, inspiring programs in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Just go to spiritist.com and get to know more about our sister radio. And as we mentioned at the very beginning, there is uh, the Valdo Franco's conferences. They will be around the United States, especially the East Coast, uh, in Chicago on February 21st, February 23rd and 24th in New Jersey, 25th in San Francisco, California, and March 2nd and 3rd in Miami, Florida. Get to know more about it at www.spiritist.us the United States Spiritist Council can certainly let you know more information about it we also want to share with you that the British Union of the Spiritist Societies is organizing its second British Spiritist meeting on May 11th and 12th at the Quaker's Friends House in London, United Kingdom just go to their website www. B-U-S-S dot org dot U-K. There is so much happening around helping us create new habits, right, George? Talking about new habits, George, we received um, an email from uh, a spiritist friend that preferred to be anonymous saying, you know, in spiritism, there is so much um, about reading books to, to get us inspired and more knowledgeable, but... This friend of ours says she has a hard time reading books. So how can this person create the habit of reading books, George? Oh, that's great. What a great um, uh, habit to create. And um, mm -hmm. So let's, let's talk about this. I actually have 
developed a kind of a seven-step formula for creating habits that I'd like to share. I've been working on habit creation for for all my life, really, but also in teaching this to many people. And um, there are kind of seven steps that I always recommend people look at. And these are these are not the only seven steps, but these are seven steps that are a great start to create habits. And perhaps mm-hmm. the, for for many people, they may be the only steps that that that's needed. So let's talk about this. Um, if, if that's okay, Vanessa? Yes, please. We want to hear about great. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the, these seven steps, again, are kind of like you're designing a house, right? Again, each habit that you create is like designing a house, building a house. What are the steps of doing that? So the first step is what I call a habit design journal or a habit planning document. Um, remember, you, you can't, you know, if you're not reading books right now, it's because if you're not reading the books that you want to read, it's because you're you're just you're just going about what habit you already have, which is not reading books. It's very natural, you know. To change a habit means to go from something that uh, to do something that is very natural for you, to doing something that is not natural for you, and to keep doing that unnatural thing until it becomes natural and easy, right? And to do that requires some design. And so the first thing, the first step is to um, you can just take out a piece of paper and, and title it My Habit Planning Document. Okay? And on that habit planning document, the first thing you write is why does this habit that, and, and you might want to write habit planning document for the habit of reading regularly. Okay, for example. Mm-hmm. And then the fir- and the first thing you write on that document besides the title is why is this habit important to me? Why is this habit important to me? Because if you don't, if you aren't connected with the why, if the why isn't energizing for you, mm-hmm. you you lo- you don't have the motivation to really do the rest of the steps. Yeah. So so write down as many whys as you can. Oh, reading will bolster my daily happiness. You know, for example, or reading will uh, bring me closer to God because I will un- better understand the truth of life and the truth of you know. The spiritual life, you know. So write down the why, and you may also want to write down people who are motivational for you in this regard. Are there models in your life that regularly read that motivate you? Say, I want to become like that person. So write down the why, the, the various reasons why you want to create the habit, and it may also be, you know, for your children, or you want to change for your family. Mm-hmm. You know, those are powerful motivators, right? So that's the first step: is to is to start that habit planning document and write down why. The second thing to write down, the second step, these are all things, you could see these as seven things to write down on that document. So the second step is what is the positive alternative? I call it the positive alternative. What I meant by this is Mm -hmm. if it is a bad habit you're trying to to remove, okay, if it's something you want to stop doing, Mm -hmm. it's hard to stop doing something. It's easier to start doing something positive. Yeah. Okay, to replace that bad thing. But here we are trying to create a positive habit of reading. So what I mean by positive alternative here is what is something that will make this more fun for you? So uh, as an example, maybe uh, to create your reading habit, you could um, read in a room of your house that you really enjoy. Or maybe you could um, – you know, read outside of the house in a you know either either in your in your backyard or you go to a park and read. So how can you read in a way that that makes it more enjoyable for you? Or you can put on a candle that mm-hmm. smells nice. You know, so what what is something that will make this more fun for you than just reading? Because remember, you're not doing something partly because it's not fun for you at this moment. You know, to do it. So write down that positive alternative. Write down what what, what will make it more fun. The third step to write that the third thing to write down on the document the third step of the design is what i call the sustainable path the sustainable path remember um building a house back to the analogy of building a house like creating a habit is like building a house you don't just build a house overnight you will exhaust yourself and you will build a pretty bad house right and you'll probably give up if you say I'm going to build the house overnight, yeah. But if you say, you know what, this week I'm going to uh, put up the these beams here for the house, and next week I'll put up these boards right here. 
So you do it gradually, then you could be assure yourself of success. I'll give you a, a, a concrete example for this reading habit. Why not say that if you're going to read every day, instead of saying, all right, I'm going to just read every day, that's very vague. That's very vague, and you won't know whether you've succeeded if you just say, I'm going to read every day. But if you say, I'm going to read half a page every single day or three times a week this week. I'm going to read just half a page three times a week this week. And then next week, I will read half a page four times a week this week you know, or that week. Or even start with one time a week. But you start gradually in a way that makes you feel almost impatient to keep going. But it's important for you to do it in a way that it's so easy for you to start. Or it could be it could be half a page every day. Or it could be, you know, one paragraph every day. Start in a way that's so easy for you. And then after that you could say, Oh, I'm gonna read three paragraphs every day now because one paragraph is so easy, that's that's boring for me. You keep doing that so so write down what your sustainable path is. Write that down. Say, I'm gonna start with half a page a day and then I'll graduate to um, you know, three quarters of a page a day, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. And eventually, you're at ten pages a day, no problem. Mm-hmm. I, I've developed this this habit myself of reading. I know I, I very much sympathize with with the listener who shared the question because I have tried for many years to have a reading habit, and I couldn't do it until I followed this plan. Now I'm now I'm regularly reading more than ten pages a day, and it's not a problem for me. And it's amazing because that used to be very very difficult for me. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the fourth part of the plan is what I call the trigger, the trigger. In other words, how are you going to be reminded to read every, you know, every day? How, mm-hmm. how are you just going to trust that you'll remember? No. Remember, if you're not doing something, on a, if it's a habit not to do something, it's going to be a habit to, not, to keep not doing it. So you've got to have a trigger to remind you to do it. So one exa- a couple of examples. Um, uh, it, it could be a specific time in the day as a trigger. Like, okay, I am going to read during breakfast, right? So breakfast will be a trigger for you to do your reading. Or you could say, um, I'm going to read at you know 8 p.m. each evening. And and what would be even better is if you can add to that trigger some kind of a reminder for you, some kind some kind of an alarm also. Like for example, I use a uh, many of us these days have a uh, a cell phone that can do that can have an alarm. Mm-hmm. You can schedule a daily alarm. So I recommend doing that. Use a a cell phone um, and schedule a daily alarm so that you go when it reminds you. First, you have to think about what makes when does it make sense for the alarm to go off. So that I don't feel annoyed by the alarm. <laughs> exactly. You know, so that okay. So so that's the trigger to write mm-hmm. down. And if there's in, if there's interest, we can go more deeply if there's time and interest. The mm-hmm. next uh, fifth item to write down is tracking. Tracking. Mm-hmm. How will you track that mm-hmm. you are making progress? This is very important. If you don't track that you're making progress, you don't know if you're making progress, yeah. and you. It's a, it's an additional motivation. So mm-hmm. as an example, maybe you have a wall calendar, a calendar on your wall or a calendar somewhere that you can mark each day you read, each day you follow your habit. You can you can put a check mark or, or or put a star there. And it becomes like a game for you, right? That that you're you're tracking this every single day, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um what I do is um I have an I have an iPhone but you don't have to have an iPhone for this. Many mm-hmm. smartphones or even just on a computer, you can use some kind of a application or document to track. On the iPhone, I use something called Daily Tracker. Uh, mm-hmm. There's an application on iPhone. Yeah. So that's an option. So that's number five. Number six, and then just we have two more here. Number six is intentional practice. Intentional practice. So... What is intentional practice? It is taking a moment while you are writing your habit creation document, mm-hmm. taking a moment and actually imagining you yourself seeing the trigger go off or finding you know the moment of the trigger and imagining yourself doing it for three times. And, and there's no 
special number for the three, but just more than once anyway. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so while you yeah. are designing the habit, do intentional practice. because, And you could do this intentional practice even after you design the habit because mm-hmm. if you can visualize yourself doing it, you're much and, – and specifically where and when you will do it, mm-hmm. if you can visualize yourself doing it several times where and when specifically – it'll be much more likely. It's like muscle memory. You'll, when you get to that place and that time, you'll somehow be more naturally motivated to do that thing. It's very magical. Yes. So intentional practice. Okay. And then finally, the seventh item is what I call accountability mm-hmm. and inspiration. And this is to ask yourself, to whom will I report about my progress? Mm-hmm. And, and when will I be reporting to them, to, to that person or that group, about my progress? So for those of you who are, um, you know, if you have other spiritist friends mm-hmm. and you want, to, you, you want to say, hey, you know what, dear friend, I'm, I'm trying to create a regular daily habit of reading um, the Spirits book, for example, or the mm-hmm. Gospel according to Spiritism. Can I, can I, can, do you mind if I just report to you every week how I'm doing with that? Because it's, it's going to be so helpful for me to know that you're expecting me to report, just to share with you, hey, this week, I, yes, I did it, or no, this week I, I had family visiting, I was so busy. But you've got to report. And when you report to somebody or to a group of people, you're also inspiring them. So it's accountability and inspiration. You, you're, you're, doing not, you're, only, you're not just doing yourself a favor but you're also doing the other person a favor by inspiring them about creating habits, you know. Yes. So, so these are me, the seven steps, yeah. Yeah, so let me see if we got it right, okay? So number one, plan it out. Number two, write down the whys it's, it's important. Oh, yeah, well, that's actually part of the first one, the first? to create the document and write the why, yeah. Okay, and then the second one, positive the alternative? The second one is positive alternative, that's right. The, Third one. Uh, oh, the I've, third one is um, uh, uh, gradu- uh, sustainable path. Sustainable path. So number yeah. four is about the triggers. Number five is tracking the progress. Number six is intentional practice with uh, imagining yourself doing that, uh, visualizing it. Number seven, accountability, inspiration. Great. While you were sharing those seven steps. Uh, we had here um, Daniel Santos sharing with us about the insights of Benjamin Franklin, who was quite wise in his proposal of the 13 virtues as a practice of the inner transformation, creating new virtues. And then Kirsten DeMello was sharing with us about passages from Joanna de Angelis when she herself talked about education as a powerful tool which will make possible for the acquisition of latent virtues, the unfoldment of it. It's in the book Child of God. And she also mentioned another one when uh, Joanna said, consider suffering and work as helpmates of your spiritual growth. Mm. These are great. uh, And and she found out, Kirsten DeMello, that these are great shows to help us create new habits. So it's fascinating what you're telling us. It's very practical. That's my feeling, George. With your seven steps, we can go from theory to practice. Exactly. And you can, you can apply this to any habit that you are trying to create. I mean, it could even be including uh, one example. Um, something that you might not think is a habit to create is, is um, loving thoughts of, uh, of others. You know, sometimes we find ourselves in our lives when we think of someone or someone sends us an email or something, we, we have judgmental thoughts about them if we're angry with them about something or whatnot. And, and creating a habit of, of loving thoughts of others. So uh, every time we see that person, we think of one good thing about them instead. Exactly. You know, that's another example. So you could, you could do this with just about any habit in your life. You can, you can use this, uh, princip- these principles to, to really install that, that, pos- that better software. It's like upgrading your, your soul <laughs> software, you know. Yeah, it makes so much sense. And as we're talking here, George, it reminds us about, you know, the need of progress. And uh, after the break, we would like to go even deeper about the importance of energy management and how vital it is for our own preservation. We'll be right back. Wonderful. We will return to our program. (music) 
new masterpiece has just been released by Odyssey of America, Memoirs of a Suicide by Yvonne Pereira. Under the guidance of the spirit Leon Dennis, the spirit author Camilo Castello Branco, using the pen name Camilo Cândido de Botelho, describes to the medium Yvonne A. Pereira his dreadful experience after discarnated by suicide. The book entails invaluable instruction demonstrating the greatness of the divine mercy toward repentant suicides and providing them with the opportunity to understand the universe and life in its fullest dimension. The beginnings of planet Earth, the evolution of the human being, the immortality of the soul. Christ's conscious morality and other relevant themes are presented for the understanding that no attempt at moral growth will work if we remain imprisoned in self-ignorance. A completing of this work shows that there is a road of reconstruction for those who repent. There is always hope because rehabilitation is possible. Buy your copy today at www.edgesayofamerica.com. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. Now in English, the book, Action and Reaction, by the spirit Andrea Luiz, psychographed by Chico Xavier. Buy your copy online or via your ebook reader. Go to www.edicefamerica.com today. The International Spiritist Council is organizing and promoting the 7th World Spiritist Congress, which will be held in Havana, Cuba, on March 23rd through the 25th of 2013. The Congress theme will be Charity and Spiritual Education in Building a World of Peace, 150 Years of the Gospel According to Spiritism. For more information, please visit number 7 and now we return to our program. Dear listener, we are here talking to George Cow, who is a good friend of Kardec Radio and also a promo program director at the Enlightened Business Academy, chief officer at Friends of Your Highest Work and business coach and marketing consultant. If you use Facebook, you can access his very page at facebook.com slash George Cow, G E O R G K A O. And you go there and get to know more about his amazing work. George is telling us much about habit creation. He just informed us about seven wonderful steps about how to acquire new habits. It's so important to progress we need to change. To change, we need new habits. To create new habits, we need not only a plan, but a strategy. And here is George Cow's tips about it. George, as you're talking about the strategies about uh, habit creation, it reminded me that some people are really idle. And in their case, I mean, it's defeating the purpose. If they don't have a plan, it's not going to happen. So the first step is really to have a plan and the solid reason to change, right? Yeah, ex I mean, exactly. Always, always remember that to change our souls, to change our lives, is basically to change a bunch of little habits or big habits in our lives. That's what it is. And to change a habit, is, is a, it's a big deal. Uh, it's like building a house. And we don't build a house without a plan. And we don't build a house without the motivation to build a house. So always remember that, and, uh, and that hopefully will motivate us all to, to create a, a plan for ourselves to change. And it's interesting because one of the most difficult things nowadays is to change our habit of eating and uh, changing it to eating healthy. It's yeah. so difficult because we're talking about the preservation of the body and in spiritism there is much about it some people george as you may have noticed they talk much about being spiritual but they forget about the physical body i'll give an example sometimes i go to spiritist centers wonderful people but then when they do fundraisers they have sodas oh wow yeah mm -hmm. and it's so mismatching because 
it, it's not coherent with you know the caring for the spirit and also of the the instrument of this reincarnation because we know so does this is a poison so mm. you know correct i think probably many people uh don't even realize it you know and they they're they're doing it out of habit <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly i remember when at the spirit side of baltimore many years ago uh, we got to know uh, more about organic food, then we shifted all the fundraisings, and uh, many people were on board immediately. They got to know what was organic, and as you said, some people were resistant at the time because they were not sure what organic was. They thought it's like right. fancy food just to spend more money, That's and right. it's not. You're talking about reading yourself of toxins, so sometimes. People don't change habits because they don't have knowledge about the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the possibility that there is something better and healthier. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, and um, speaking of what, what is better and healthier, if I may share with you a mm -hmm. number of um, energy management habits that I recommend uh, folks change. And I'm just going to kind of read a list, and if there's any interest, we can go deeper into any one of them. Please. So as, as, we, as we were talking earlier, if you want to change your habits, uh, my recommendation is, well, uh, really, the first habit, I think that the listener that uh, shared the question about spiritual study yeah. is a wonderful habit to have. That's really a great first habit to, to create. But beyond that, what, what, else, what else should we change? What is really, really important? And it's energy management. And why is energy management so important? Just briefly. Mm. Well, we all know that we, 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 we have better days. We treat people better when we have more energy, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why. There is, there is an increasing amount of science about willpower mm. and discipline. And they're finding in science, um, and I, I'm, not a, mm. I'm not a neuroscientist like, like you are, <laughs> or, um, <laughs> Vanessa and others, but what I have read is they're finding out in science that willpower, your willpower, is like a muscle. It's literally almost like a muscle. It's an area of the brain, in other words. And it's, a, it's an area of your brain, and that is responsible for your willpower, how much, um, how much you can do good when other people do bad to you, or how much you can do good when you don't feel like doing good. That's all willpower, and it's a muscle that we all need to develop, and none, most people don't know how to develop it. And I'll tell you what the secrets are, so-called secrets, okay. is energy management. So these are the set of um, habits that I recommend you install one by one by one. And remember, when, when we're building a house, it's easier to just build one house rather than try to build three houses at the same time. So mm -hmm. install one habit at a time if possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first one is good sleep. Mm -hmm. Incredibly important for willpower and energy management. Good sleep. And this includes naps as well. I'll tell you, I can, I can pretty much say um, that probably most of us hearing this right now are not getting enough sleep. Yes. Um, there is a common misconception that if you sleep too much, it's bad for you or you're lazy. That's not true. No. If you read the books, the science of sleep, there is really no such thing as sleeping too much. I mean, there, there, there could be a symptom of depression. That's, that's something different. Yeah. But most of us need more sleep than we're getting. So and, and, and George, do not feel bad about getting more sleep. <laughs> and, and George, it's so true what you're saying because, for example, neuroscience uh, confirms that sleep is important for memory consolidation. Nowadays, we have so many people complaining about memory problems, and we yeah. wonder why. You know, that also is involved in the lack of sleep. And in the spirit sense, sleeping is very active. You're not lazy because we know if we go to the spirit book, Sleeping Dreams. We are so active in sometimes interacting uh, with the uh, higher spirits, learning new things, and being treated when we are in need of uh, readjustments in our house, and also visiting other people, not only in the spirit world, but people who are incarnated and are um, also having their physical bodies at sleep. So. Sleep, as you said, is a very active time, very important for the mind and the body. Yeah, and I, I thank you, and that's that's very profound to think of that because we're not, it's not we're not we're not being lazy when we sleep. We are truly resting so that we can do our work in the world with more vigor, with more vitality, with more joy. Right. So that includes naps. 
This is something a lot of people um, uh, don't realize can be very helpful. I'll give you an example. I take three naps a day. <laughs> <laughs> and when people hear that, they're very surprised. I think part of it, it's, it's easier for me because I work from home. So How I long take, are your naps, George? It's about, it's anywhere between uh, five minutes to 30 minutes. That's reasonable. Liter- literally, if I if I could lay on the floor, on, my, on the carpet, even just lay on the floor quietly for five minutes, even if I don't fall asleep, uh, if I just relax and uh, let my mind wander, it's helpful. Sure. Uh, but, but I usually try to take a 20 to 30 minute nap if I can, um, mm-hmm. three times a day. Now, that's not for everyone. Some some people, you know, like my wife, she needs to sleep a long time at night and then she doesn't like to nap during the day and that's that's okay too, of course. Yeah, of course. So that's the that's the the first um energy management habit to install is good sleep, plenty of sleep. The second mm-hmm. one I would say is breathing. <laughs> yeah. And it seems so obvious. Well of course we all breathe, but most of us spend our days breathing very shallowly. Mm-hmm. And we don't use our lungs to the capacity that they have. So my encouragement is to start developing a habit where every 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 single day you check in at least once or twice a day. Of course, do it more often. You keep growing the habit until you check. You're checking in every hour to just take three nice, easy, deep breaths whenever you have what I call breath awareness. Yeah. Or even just one nice, easy, deep breath. Because more oxygen will actually increase your willpower. It's very interesting. So mm-hmm. that's the second thing. And you know, George, in mm-hmm. March, we're going to have a special program. And we are also honored by it, by you saying this and also by knowing that the very Dr. Herbert Benson from Harvard University is going Wonderful. to be here with us teaching about the very technique of breathing to promote relaxation. He was the one that pioneered in the studies of uh, uh, breathing relaxation, and he's Mm. going to be here with us at Kardec Radio this coming March. Amazing. It's amazing. (laughs) That's that's wonderful, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'll just kind of quickly name the the other exercises, and I know that we are running out of time, but um, the third one is uh, exercise. And and just briefly, if you are to think, well, how much exercise do I need? Here's my recommendation real quick. Work up to 30 minutes of brisk walking five times a week. Now, that's not, again, you're building a house here. That's not something you start with. You might want to start with just 10 minutes, you know, once a week if you're not walking at all. But brisk walking means walking faster than you would walk around your house, just walking faster uh, not running, but walking fast enough where it's going to be a little difficult to carry on a conversation. So 30 minutes, five times a week is optimal for many, many people. So quickly, um, George, somebody just texted us asking this very question. Does cleaning uh, the home include, yes. is included in exercise? Exercise. Well? Thank you. I'm so yeah. glad you said that. Some yeah. of us already exercise plenty, but we just need to be aware that we are exercising. You know, to, to tell you the truth, The more active we can be in our day, the better it is. So, uh, you know, when I say three, thirty minutes, five times a week, brisk walking, I'm talking about many, many people in America who sit all day when they're working, and they're not, you know, they're not active. So, if you just do thirty minutes, five times a week, that's optimal for a lot of people already. But yes, if you're cleaning instead of exercising, instead of walking or gardening, uh, or helping outside, doing some outdoor work, yes. That that mm-hmm. all counts. Okay. Um, the next one, the fourth one, is low glycemic food. Mm. And very simply, you can you can look this up online. I won't go into it, but low glycemic food, G L Y C E M I C, will give you more energy in a more stable way. A, an example of high glycemic food, which is not good for you, is soda. <laughs> Mm. You know, soda is high glycemic, whereas low glycemic tends to be more like vegetables and not all fruits, only certain fruits and certain grains, etc. Um, next one is water. Mm-hmm. Most water. of us probably don't drink enough water, and mm-hmm. so I encourage us to take a look at that. Um, I mean, very famously, recently, you know, Hillary Clinton uh, fell because she was de- uh, she 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 was fell ill because she was dehydrated. Many of us are dehydrated, and we don't realize it. So water is very important. And then um, the next one, two more I would share. The next one is um, meditation. Mm. And I know you had the wonderful guest Tara Brock on uh, yes. the previous show, 
when she talked about meditation. And I'll just say briefly, if you go to uh, – if you – if you want to know the benefits of meditation and how to do it, just go to Google.com, go to a search engine, and type in benefits of meditation mm-hmm. and read one or two articles, and you will be astounded by how mm-hmm. important it is. So meditation. Mm-hmm. meditation. And again, don't start with, you know, one thing that I, I've always found to be intimidating is when longtime meditators tell, tell newbies to say, oh, just start with 15 minutes a day <laughs> or, <laughs> or even start with five or ten minutes a day. No. Start with half a minute a day, <laughs> or even one. No, literally, uh, Vanessa. It took me more than six months mm. to go to get to ten minutes a day of mm. meditation. I, I couldn't even sit still for one minute mm-hmm. when I first started. So please don't feel bad. It took me six months to get to ten minutes a day. I, mm. I can I can now do thirteen minutes a day, and I have no problem doing that of you know, meditation. <laughs> you know? That's so realistic. Mm-hmm. The, the final one is vitamins. Mm. Um, most of us don't get the proper nutrients in our body, and so I just encourage you to, to think about three types of vitamins. One is vitamin D for mm-hmm. daylight. D yeah. for daylight. Vitamin D is very important. Mm-hmm. Um, second one is omega-3, so like fish oil or flaxseed oil. Omega-3s are very very important. And third is some kind of a general multivitamin that you, that you like is, is going to be fine. Yes, so, it's very, very practical. And as you're saying this, I, I will just uh, um, brush through quickly. It's one, good sleep, two, breathing, three, exercise, four, low glycemic foods, five, water, six, meditation, seven, vitamins. Wonderful, because yeah. as you're saying this, yeah. it unfolds the ultimate question as we're talking about energy management and habit creation, the implications of not doing so. Because as you talked at the beginning, you mentioned about No Solar, right? <laughs> the book. And yeah. Alan Kardec himself, in the, the answer to his question, 718, uh, discloses that without energy and health, work is impossible. And work That's right. parallel to progress. Without work, there is no progress. So in the book No Solar by Andrea Lewis, he mentions about a very intriguing aspect of those who are reckless about their energy manage- management, which is indirect suicide. He mentions that when when we eat mm-hmm. improperly, we are committing an indirect suicide because we are depleting ourselves of energy. Can you tell us more about that concept, please, and wow. and the, the yeah. implication of energy management for our own alignment with the oh, Creator? Gosh. Well, that's wonderful, and that, that is such a that is such a scary possibility, isn't it? Yes. That um, that indirect suicide of uh, you know that, that was described in Nasolar. Um, so here's what I would say about that. And this is related to um, really caring for our, our bodies. When we, when we are not connected and realize how valuable this bodily vehicle is, mm-hmm. how lucky we are to be in this incarnation, when we forget that, which of course is the, we come back to the importance of spiritual study, when we forget that when we don't know how valuable this body is, this precious opportunity to, to, to work on this planet, mm-hmm. then – we don't take care of our body. So it really comes back to understand, understanding that, oh, my gosh, this body is so precious. It's, like, it's almost like when you, if you buy a, a Rolls-Royce car, if you buy, if you buy a very expensive car, you, you, don't, you don't drive it off-road and, and drive it off a you – know, you, don't, you don't treat it badly. You treat it with such care. Mm-hmm. Well, you are, each one of us is walking around in like a Rolls-Royce. Mm-hmm. So what kind of fuel are we going to put in? If we understand that, we're going to be like, wait, why am I eating these potato chips? It's like it's like putting junk fuel into a Rolls Royce. It's mm. going to damage the oh. engine. Or a Ferrari. Yeah, yeah it's a Ferrari, exactly. <laughs> Whatever car you think is amazing, think you are that car. You, your yeah. body is that car. Yeah. So There is, by the way, George, as you're saying this, reminds me of the new movie, And Life Goes On, which is also one of the books by Andrea Luis through Chico Javier. It's already out, and soon Kardec Radio is going to be distributing the DVD here mm-hmm. throughout the United States and the world. And we recommend it because at one of the m- main points of the, 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 the movie, there is this beautiful scene about 
the comparison between uh, spirit, spiritual body, and physical body with a carriage, the horse, and the horseman. It's so beautiful. It's it's really recommendable to everyone who wants to watch the movie. Pretty soon it's going to be available here at Kardec Radio. So, George, what would be your final advice to our audience at Kardec Radio regarding energy management and habit creation for a better life, not only in the physical body, but for immortality? Oh, absolutely. So my <laughs> final advice is to start today. Um, it is very important when you hear something new that you don't say, gosh, that was a great idea. I'm going to do this someday. <laughs> because if you can start today with some little thing, even starting, you're taking out a piece of paper or on your computer, opening up a blank document and titling it My Habit Creation Journal or My Habit Planning Journal, start doing some step today. You, it will make a difference for you to keep going on, on these things because it will help you uh, to live a happier life now, but also it will allow you more willpower to be more loving to others, to be more patient with others. That's all about energy management. So that's my encouragement. And uh, if I may uh, sure. uh, end, Vanessa, just sure. with sharing something else, um, I, you know, habit creation and energy management are just two <laughs> of the seven areas that I have been kind of coaching people around. And I just want to share what the seven areas are. Uh, just a, a list of them, so you, mm -hmm. you have some idea of them. So the seven, I call these the seven practices for a spiritually successful life. It starts with number one. So the first practice is spiritual study. So that's not a surprise. What a coincidence that the, the listener had asked that question. Number one really is spiritual study. That's the first practice. That's the most important one to start with. Second one is habit creation. We've talked about that a bit. Third one is energy management. We've also mm -hmm. talked about that a bit today. Fourth one is practicing presence. Uh, briefly, what that means is pra practicing the presence of God or pra understanding that you are never alone. You're always in the presence of spirits, mm -hmm. both good and bad. <laughs> you to be aware of that, right? Yeah. Practicing presence. Fifth one is practicing compassion, which includes um, things like loving kindness, mm -hmm. generosity, uh, sympathetic joy, which is the opposite of envy and forgiveness, as some some of those ideas. The sixth one is mindful activism, which is changing, you know, doing your work to change the world. The seventh one is true livelihood, which is integrating all of these six practices into your work, your career. So, um, if if those who are listening want to get a over a better overview of these seven, I actually have a free audio and a free um, slideshow that goes into these and if, if you're interested I, I have a link and the mm -hmm. link to, to give to you all is mm -hmm. www.yourhighestwork.com forward slash Kardec so I have a special link just for Kardec radio listeners www.yourhighest h-i-g-h-e-s-t your y-o-u-r highest work w-o-r-k dot com forward slash Kardec mm. and I invite you all to go there and get that free audio free slideshow um, and encourage yourself with these seven uh, areas wow that's wonderful we couldn't ask for more George we are so <laughs> grateful for your presence and for sharing Thank you so much so many tips and especially the practicality of every hint and tip you have given us so thank you so much we hope to continue having your collaboration at Kardec Radio and Absolutely. we'll keep track on your progress as well thank you so much George we hope to have you back soon again thanks Vanessa thanks everyone so dear listeners George Cow asked us at the very beginning please also write down your comments about the show or your feedback not only at the, the chat room of Blog Talk Radio, but at the um, the comment area of our program here today, because it's going to stay there as a reference for George and for all of us. We thank also everyone, especially Dream Master, who was always here with us, sharing about the tips of the importance of resting. Kirsten DeMello was also reminding us about passages in the Spirit Book on the importance of rest in the very law of work 
Kardec brings to us the illuminated uh, mind's teachings that in question 682, without a doubt, rest serves the restore, to restore the strength of the body and it is also needed to give a little more freedom to intelligence which must raise itself above matter. So dear listen, it's about redefining sleep. We're going to dedicate one whole show about sleep very soon in between March and April. We'll get to We'll let you know more about it for the time being. You know, the show is just halfway through. Right now, we have so much prepared for you. After the break, we are going to share with you uh, a new section of the Kardec Radio Show, answering questions that were sent to us uh, through the email, through our website, blog talk radio, etc. It's a very interesting question. We are going to address it right here at Kardec Radio, followed by amazing segments that were prepared by Kardec Radio's team. It's about the law of preservation, subtopic resignation and acceptance by Kirsten DeMello, followed by a very intriguing topic, moral hypocrisy, put together by our dear Dr. Marco Magalhães from Canada in the segment Spiritism in Your Life. And then soon after, it's going to be our dear Luis Sergio Morota talking about the gospel and spiritism, followed by the segment on questions 25 to 28 of the Spirits book by John DeRosa and Steve Shepard. And then after a break, two beautiful segments. Bernadette Liao with a Spiritist Education for Children. She's going to tell us more about tips for parents who are experiencing children's ingratitude. And at the very end, we have a gift, a gift which is the prayer of Mentor Druzo in the book Action and Reaction. Don't miss it because Kardec Radio is nourishing your soul every day wherever you are in the whole world, accessible 24-7. Let's go for a break. When we come back, we have question and answer at Kardec Radio. We will return to our program after these messages. Enjoy this new release. We're born for love. Other renowned Brazilian scientist and researcher on reincarnation, Dr. Anani Andrade. This novel describes one of the most extraordinary and genuine cases of reincarnation ever studied by Dr. Andrade's Brazilian Institute of Psychobiophysics Research in Sao Paulo State. Order your copy now at roundtable.uk at gmail.com or at www.roundtablepublishing-uk.com. Spiritist Network your gateway to on-demand Spiritist videos, www.spiritistnetwork.com. Spread the word, Kardec Radio, to learn more about Spiritism. Want to find a good way to explain life after physical death to kids or teenagers? Check out the book Message from a Teen in the Spirit World by the Spirit Nail Lucio and Psychograph by Chico Xavier. In this book, a teenager named Carlos explains his impressions on the new life in the spirit realm with his discarnate relatives and new friends. Purchase your copy online at www.ssbaltimore.org. The Spiritist Magazine is a trimestral, digital periodical that publishes the latest news on the Spiritist thought and the movement in the USA and worldwide. Subscribe now at www.spiritistmagazine.com. In the book, A Primer on Being Good by the Spirit May May, psychographed by the medium Shiko Shaviar, explains in simple language appropriate for children two paths in life, the path of good or the path of evil. God has granted us the freedom to choose either one. Purchase your copy online at www.ssbaltimore.org. Now we return to our program. 
Dear listeners, somebody just sent us a question through Facebook about uh, asking questions to people who do segments. Of course, some of us are here, and you can always submit your questions. We may respond them online, uh, or live on the very show, or in the next show. It's up to you, but don't refrain from asking us questions. And stay there, because the show today is filled with so much joy, so much instruction. You know, sometimes we suffer because we don't know better. As uh, George Cal brought to us, sometimes we don't change new habits just because we don't know there is a better way. How many people don't eat organic because they don't understand what organic is? And I tell you, organic is simply healthy food. It's the same apple without toxins, the toxins of all the 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 the, the the mess that they put to to make it grow faster. Organic has no no extra substance to make it grow faster. It doesn't have an extra substance to protect it from bugs or anything. It's the very apple that should be raised in everywhere in the world. There will be a day in which in the world, more evolved than it is today, everything will be organic because it will be criminal to put all these toxins in our food. There will be a day, dear friends, and as George Cow said, let's visualize it because changes begin in our minds. This is a very sentence that is in the book No Solar by Andre Luz. Changes begin in our thoughts. Talking about it, there is one question, and we are opening this new segment live every Saturday at Kardec Radio. It's about Kardec Radio answering your very questions. A dear friend named Fernando Aruda, he didn't say where he's from, but we are very thankful to his very question. He asked the following question. Should I give money when homeless people ask me for it? Since I began reading Kardak and Chico Xavier, life got better. And at the same time, I feel sad when people that don't have food or housing or mental health Every day I see homeless people, and always they ask me for money, which I do have. The problem is that if you give them money or food or jackets or whatever, they get used to you being the giver. And always when you say they see you on the streets, they come to you. What I'm saying is that I see that when I give help to some people, they start relying on it and counting on it for booze, drugs, etc. But obviously, there are always good people that just happen to be in a bad time in their lives. Anyways, long story short, it breaks my heart to say no and not help homeless people. But at the same time, I get asked for money multiple times a day. Can you please recommend me a book or give me the spiritist behavior in such case? I would love to hear the subject addressed on a segment of Kardec Radio as well. I bet more people also struggle with this issue. Thank you so much, Fernando, for indeed a very important question. And you know, you were right. It's not simple. But to shorten the spiritist conduct in regards to what to do when people ask you for something, you just give. Oh, but what if they're abusing you? Then, of course, you ask them, you help them with the root of the problem. Because giving them money probably is not what you actually need to do. Sometimes, I remember, for example, Raul Teixeira, a renowned speaker in Brazil and spiritist medium, he once brought to our attention that he used to visit a spiritist center where they used to help homeless people by giving soup every day. And years went by, two generations actually went by, and he kept coming to the center once a year to give a talk, etc. And then one day, one of the directors of the center came along and brought in um, a teenager with him and said, see, Dr. Ro Teixeira, this child here, we're so proud that we've been helping her mother giving soup every day. And now she's receiving our soup every day. 
Raoul Teixeira stopped. He was astounded. He realized that the very friends in the Spiritist Center, they did not realize that giving only what people need is not necessarily helping them. They needed to help them restructure their lives. Giving soup was important because it was an emergency. But what about tomorrow? We also needed to help others solidify their new lives. So if homeless people are coming to you time and again, the very same ones, why don't you look at themselves in the, in the eyes and ask, what can I really give you to help you have another life? Because it's not by chance that they may come a second, third, or fourth time asking us. And to, and to, make, to make us sure of the need of giving always the best of us, when you are hesitant, just remember of this passage by Chico Xavier. Chico Xavier once was late for work, which was quite unusual. It was quite unusual. And that day he was late. And then he was walking fast to go to work. And uh, in the middle of the street, a lady stops him by and says, Chico, Chico, I need to talk to you. There is a question I need to make. And he was like, I'm so sorry. I'm so busy. And he kept walking. And then his mentor, Emmanuel, said, look, go back and help her. So he replied. He said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in a rush. I'm late for work. It, I, I'm going to be in trouble. He said, look, five more minutes, not going to make a difference. So go help her. So he went back, listened to her, answered to her question, and kept walking said goodbye and went to work. When he was walking to work, he listened to the sound of the woman's voice saying, thank you so much, Chico Xavier. God bless you. And then Emmanuel explained to Chico, look at her, Chico. Look back. From her mouth, a beautiful um, radiation of light was coming for her mouth towards Chico Xavier, and Emmanuel asked Chico, what if she were saying, damn you, Chico Xavier. Dear friends, we're talking about giving the best we can. Sometimes people ask us for a glass of water, and if we're wise enough, you're going to realize that they need actually bread, or vice versa. This is just a, a figure of speech but we're talking about never refrain from giving. And sometimes we need to give more than we think we are actually giving. There is never too much of giving. There is actually sometimes lack of giving. So talking about this, we're going to open the segments, the segments that are here for you at Kardec Radio. Let us listen to the Law of Preservation and Resignation Acceptance and Resignation by Kirsten DeMello, followed by the beautiful segment as well by Marco Magalhães on Moral Hypocrisy. Hello, Cardiac Radio listeners, and welcome back to the Spiritist Moment segment. I am Kirsten DeMello, your host. Last time here at the Spiritist Moment, we discussed question 707 from the Spirit's book in part three, under the law of preservation. So we learned last time in question 707, we talked about the need to really work hard towards obtaining and overcoming obstacles to obtain things in our lives and to not become discouraged at the first obstacles in our life. But as we study question 708 today, we are confronted by other issues such as what if it is God's will that we are in certain situations and it is 
out of our reach to change it. So let's go directly to the question and answer and see what the spirits tell us. In question 708, it states the following. Aren't there situations in which the means of subsistence do not depend solely on human will, and where the lack of the barest necessities is a consequence of circumstance? And the spirits wisely answer, These situations are frequently cruel trials which humans must undergo, and to which they know they will be exposed. Their merit is in their submission to God's will, if their intelligence does not furnish them with some means for escaping their difficulty, if death must touch them, they should submit to it without complaint, remembering that their hour of true freedom has arrived and that despair at the final moment may cause them to lose the fruit of their resignation. So what do they tell us? There are situations in life where if our own intelligence cannot help us get out of a destitute situation, then it is a situation that they must undergo. As we know, many different lifetimes, we are exposed to different experiences. And it is the will of God who seeks for us to grow and to learn. Even though, obviously, during the situation, it's very difficult for us to grasp the concept that, well, I'm in this destitute and hard situation because it's going to make me a better person in the end. Sometimes it isn't enough for us to think that way. And that's why the utilizing prayer and seeking to changing our thoughts and our perspectives, little by little, we will gain this courage. Let us briefly share a story from a book that is not yet in English, but it's entitled Blessed Are the Simple, a book that was psychographed by a medium, Valdo Vieira, by the spirit Valerium. This book was originally published in the 1960s. It's a book of small stories that are very educational, morally speaking. And we're going to paraphrase the story today. The, the title of the story, if we were to translate it to English, would be something analogous to The Last Man Alive or The Last Man on Earth, Chapter 26. Basically, it's about a man who was extremely poor and very sad, lived in a very small home that was in ruins, and he basically felt that he was destitute, although he always remained very faithful in his beliefs to God and prayed every night. And he stayed in that location for a couple of years, and he basically only lived off of potatoes that he plucked from his backyard, and that's how he lived. He used to go outside his backyard, get his potatoes, and go back in his home. And he did this and lived this way for several years in a very poor situation, until one day he decided he was going to move to a different area from where he was. Except this time when he left his home, he didn't go through his backyard, he went through the opposite way, perhaps through his front yard. And as he was leaving down the hill, leaving his old home behind, he heard the sound of someone moaning. And then he saw this crippled man who was full of wounds and really destitute, living in a type of makeshift home that was full of mud and dirt. And he saw that that man there was even worse off than he was because he was merely living off of the skin of the potatoes that he himself used to throw away. So this story teaches us something, that even though we may find ourselves in these cruel trials, as the spirits tell us in answer 708, there truly are others who are even, even in worse situations than us. So it's best if we try to be obedient before God's laws, knowing that everything happens for a reason. Every experience we go through is for our own benefit to grow. And that through prayer and trying to resign ourselves, we may better understand and accept the situations we endure in our lives with some more moral courage. Of course, we know the situations can be extremely difficult and they weigh heavily on our hearts. But with prayer and persistence, we truly can persevere in our lives. And until next week, dear friends of Kardec Radio, we wish you many blessings.
Hello, dear Card Deck Radio listener. Welcome to the segment Spiritism in Your Life. Today we're going to talk about moral hypocrisy. More specifically, the tendency among people to judge others more severely than they judge themselves. This idea was also mentioned by Plato, as we can find the introduction of the Gospel according to Spiritism, section number 4, item number 18, which says, The natural disposition shown by all is to perceive our defects far less than we see those of others. And if you carefully read this, you will realize that this is exactly what Jesus brought to us in many different passages in the Gospel. As an example, Matthew wrote, You see the mote that is in the eye of your neighbor, but you do not see the beam that is in your own eye. And again, there are many other passages in the Gospel that bring the exact same idea. We can certainly find this idea in other religious traditions. And also, in current scientific research, where we can find thousands of papers trying to understand and explain this attitude. One example of this behavior can be seen in a paper by De Stano et al. Participants were asked to assign two tasks, one from himself and one for another participant. One task was easy and short, the other one was difficult and boring. Most participants assigned the easy, short task for themselves and the boring task for the other candidates. Another group of participants was just observing other candidates making the decision. In the end, the group of participants that was giving themselves the easy task considered that to be fair, while the group of participants that was observing other candidates giving themselves the easy task considered that not to be fair. It is part of our human nature in this stage of evolution to analyze and judge other people's acts or defects. We tend to close our eyes for our own mistakes and our own judgments and our own actions. So we need a moment to think about this and do a contemporary psychological analysis of this matter. Many of us are trained since early childhood to suppress or ignore our own feelings, emotions. And by doing that, we also learn to ignore our own problems or to overlook them. When we grow up now, we are afraid and scared of analyzing who we really are. And when all that is combined, we actually start to project all those problems that we have inside us onto other people. And now, every single thing that happens around us is going to be severely judged and criminalized because we're basically finding a escape route to all these problems that are so embedded into ourselves. Think about another possibility. When is it okay, or is it okay for me to reprehend someone that is doing something wrong, especially because we live in a society, and in many instances, we have to take actions. In order to help us answer this question, we're going to go back to the Gospel according to Spiritism, chapter 10, where Alain Kardec asked the spirit of St. Louis, number 19, As no one is perfect, does it follow that no one has the right to reprehend their neighbor? And St. Louis answers, this is certainly not the right conclusion to arrive at, since that each one of you must work for the progress of everyone, and above all, especially for those who have been placed in your care. But for this very reason, it should be done in moderation, in order to obtain a usable end, and not, as is so often the case, for the mere pleasure of reviling. In this event, the reprehension would be weakness, whereas in the previous instant, it is a duty demanded by charity, which must be accomplished with all possible care. For the rest, the censure that is made of others should also be directed at oneself. So trying to find out if you too are not deserving of the same reprimand. In other words, my friends, when you want to criticize someone, first you need to, number one, analyze your own feelings, your own actions, and make sure that you're not only projecting your own problems into that situation. Number two, you should ask yourself, am I helping this person? Am I sharing love and charity? Number three, analyze the situation carefully, trying to understand why is the other person doing that? 
If you answer to these three points, and you're convinced that by doing that, you are indeed helping a brother, so that's the time when you have to take action with love. That's the most important thing. My dear friends, let us remember always the messages brought to us by illuminated spirits like Plato, our Master Jesus, and so many others. And let's love one another. God bless us. We will return to our program after these messages. Enjoy this new release. We're born for love. Other renowned Brazilian scientist and researcher on reincarnation, Dr. Anani Andrade. This novel describes one of the most extraordinary and genuine cases of reincarnation ever studied by Dr. Andrade's Brazilian Institute of Psychobiophysics Research in Sao Paulo State. Order your copy now at roundtable.uk at gmail.com or at www.roundtablepublishing-uk.com. Spiritist Network, your gateway to on-demand Spiritist videos, www.spiritistnetwork.com. Spread the word, Kardec Radio, to learn more about Spiritism. Want to find a good way to explain life after physical death to kids or teenagers? Check out the book, Message from a Teen in the Spirit World, by the spirit Nea Lucio and psychographed by Chico Xavier. In this book, a teenager named Carlos explains his impressions on the new life in the spirit realm with his discarnate relatives and new friends. Purchase your copy online at www.ssbaltimore.org. The Spiritist Magazine is a trimestral, digital periodical that publishes the latest news on the Spiritist thought and the movement in the USA and worldwide. Subscribe now at www.spiritistmagazine.com. In the book, A Primer on Being Good by the Spirit May May, psychographed by the medium Shiko Shaviar, explains in simple language appropriate for children two paths in life, the path of good or the path of evil. God has granted us the freedom to choose either one. Purchase your copy online at www.ssbaltimore.org. Now we return to our program. starts. People hand in hand getting together around the table, surrounded by the shadows of the unknown, in a wait for something weird or uncanny to happen before their fearful eyes, while someone lets out some bizarre sounds to evoke spirits in a medieval zest of mystical euphoria. Spiritist mediumistic meeting, I apologize in advance for I'll have to disappoint you. Far from focusing on the phenomenon itself as a part of a curiosity fair, a true spiritist meeting has to be guided by the highest feelings of fraternity, supported by prayer, spiritual and psychological knowledge, all this in accordance to the evangelic ethics, in a natural, spontaneous and religious atmosphere always under the critical analysis of those in charge of the guidance required in the occasion, because the main purpose is prophetic, that is, moral teaching. Well, around 2,000 years ago, the Apostle Paul gave us an idea of what today we need to do in our meetings. In this episode of the Corinthians, 
chapter 14, verse 26 to 33, he says, we quote, What is then, brothers, when you come together? Each one has a psalm, has a teaching, has a revelation, has a tongue, has an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. If any man speaks a tongue, let it be by two, or at the most three, and in turn, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God, and let the prophets speak two or three, and let the others discern. But if a revelation be made to another sitting by, let the first keep silence. For you all can prophesy one by one, that all may learn, and all may be exhorted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not a God of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of saints. Dear listener, it is not a coincidence that Spiritism, a word coined by Allan Kardec, holds up the same principles only adding to them all the psychological, spiritual, and moral knowledge. And the main principle is the ethical tool, which for us is the gospel itself. The free and careful analysis of the communications also follows the evangelist John's piece of advice in his first letter, chapter 4, verse 1, when he says, quote, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but prove the spirits, whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Well, never will we be able to make it without the evangelic criteria and the help of this outstanding work called Spiritism, which is the tool for us to approach the spirit world without mysticism and under the light this age requires. Let's wrap it up now with Kardec's opinion is still in the introduction of the Gospel according to Spiritism. Quote, as a result of all this, and in relation to all that is outside the exclusive field of moral education, the revelations that any one medium may receive will have an individual character without any stamp of authenticity and should be considered as a personal opinions from this or that spirit and it would be imprudent to accept them or thoughtlessly propagate them as absolute truths. my friend this is a much safer road that lies ahead thank you so much question number 25 is spirit independent of matter or is it only a property of matter, as colors are properties of light, and as sound is a property of air? They are distinct from each other, but the union of spirit and matter is necessary to enable matter to act intelligently. Subquestion number 25. Is this union equally necessary for the manifestation of spirit? For you it is necessary because you are not built to perceive spirit apart from matter. Your senses are not formed to do so. Author's Comments for Question 25 In this section we understand spirit to mean the intelligent principle rather than the entities designated by the name. Question number 26. Can we conceive of spirit apart from matter and matter apart from spirit? Absolutely, through thought. Question number 27. So, are there two general elements in the universe, matter and spirit? Yes, and over everything is God the creator and author of all. These three elements comprise the principle of all that exists. They are the universal trinity. However, to the element of matter must be added the universal fluid, which plays an intermediary role between spirit and matter, per se. 
since matter is too dense for spirit to act upon it directly. Although from a certain point of view, this fluid may be regarded as part of the material element, it differs from it due to special properties. If it were simply matter, there would be no reason for spirit not to be matter too. It is placed between spirit and matter, yet it is a fluid, just as matter is matter. In its countless combinations with matter and under the direction of spirit, it is capable of producing an infinite variety of things about which you still know very, very little. By being the agent upon which spirit acts, the universal, primitive, or elementary fluid is the principle without which matter would forever remain in a state of dispersion. It would never acquire the properties given to it by gravitation. The author's footnote to the universal fluid. The universal cosmic fluid is the primitive elementary matter whose modifications and transformations comprise the innumerable variety of bodies found in nature. As the universal elementary principle, it offers two distinct states, etherization or imponderability, which may be considered the normal primitive state, and materialization or ponderability, which is in a certain way only consecutive to the former. The intermediary point is the transformation of the fluid into tangible matter. However, even then there is not a brusque transition because our imponderable fluids may be regarded as a halfway phase between the two states. Allen Kardec, Genesis, International Spiritist Council, 2009, page 354. Subquestion number 27. Might this fluid be what we call electricity? We have stated that it is capable of countless combinations. What you call the electric and magnetic fluids are both modifications of the one universal fluid. Properly speaking, this fluid is a perfect and subtler matter that may be considered as being independent of matter per se. Question number 28. Since spirit is something in and of itself, wouldn't it be clearer and less subject to confusion to label these two general elements as inert matter and intelligent matter? Words do not matter much to us. It is up to you to formulate your language in a way that you can understand one another. The disputes among you almost always arise because you cannot agree on the meanings of the words you use. Your language is incomplete regarding things that do not touch your senses. Author's Remarks for Question Number 28 One obvious fact dominates all theories. We see matter, which is not intelligent, and we see an intelligent principle that is independent of matter. Nonetheless, the origin of and connection between these two are unknown to us. Whether they have a common origin and necessary points of contact between them, and whether intelligence has its own independent existence, or is only a property or effect, as some claim, or even whether it is an emanation of the divinity, this is all unknown to us. Matter and intelligence are distinct as far as we are concerned. Thus, we regard them as being two principles comprising the universe. Above these, however, we see an intelligence dominating and governing all others, and it differs from them due to its essential attributes. It is this supreme intelligence that we call God. We will return to our program after these messages. Would you like to liberate yourself from your life struggles or to find inner balance? The Inner Journey CD has three beautiful visualizations that will help you bring harmony to your life. 
As Joanna D'Angeli tells us to, live in a way that you leave enlightening footprints in your pathway as if they were stars pointing out the pathway to happiness. To find this CD, go to the bookstore on the Spiritist Society of Baltimore webpage, www.ssbaltimore.org, that is www.ssbaltimore.org. Dot .org and start your inner journey today. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. The International Spiritist Council is organizing and promoting the 7th World Spiritist Congress, which will be held in Havana, Cuba on March 23rd through the 25th of 2013. The Congress theme will be charity and spiritual education in building a world of peace. 150 years of the gospel according to spiritism. For more information, please visit www.7cem.org. And now we return to our program. Welcome to our Yes, Youth Education is brought us of West Kardec Radio. I am Bernadette Liao, and I'll be spending a few minutes with you, inspiring to bring spiritual awareness and spiritual teachings to our youth, parents, and educators. Today we will answer the following question. Despite everything I have done for my child, why does he still treat me with ingratitude? We sometimes hear people saying that they wish children would come with a manual on how to handle them. Although the idea may sound wonderful, we all know that it does not occur. Or, even if a hypothetical children would be born with a manual, it would become quickly outdated and would have to be frequently revised due to so many changes that a human being goes through growing up. Parents wish to have that magical manual, mainly when their child shows challenging behavior and signs of ingratitude. If frustrated or in a moment of anger, parents may make the following comment. My child is very ungrateful, and that's how he pays me back after all the sacrifice I made for him. These words, even if not said exactly as we mentioned, may have crossed some parents' mind one way or another. So let's reflect on it beginning with the possessive adjective my in my son. What is really ours? What we really own? We may say, this is my house, my car, my computer, my money, but these are material things that can suddenly be gone. We hear stories of people who had a great deal of possessions and later lost everything after a natural disaster, including their loved ones. So, again we ask, what is truly ours? Well, ours is what we nurture our soul and what stays with us after we leave the material world. They are our moral values, knowledge, and our experiences. These are our true possessions. When we refer to someone as my son, my mother, or my husband, it is only to give a sense of belonging, meaning that we are related to a certain family but we do not own our children. A child is primarily a child of God, and a parent is someone who God entrusted with a task to raise and help a child to progress. When a child is being ungrateful, it is understandable that parents feel sad and frustrated with their children's behavior. But even though parents may feel hurt, it is important not to judge the child. 
we learn with the spirit of philosophy and with the blessings of reincarnation that we are spirits in progress, moving toward our perfection in every lifetime. Therefore, there is a good chance that we have shown some ingratitude towards someone in our previous or present life, and we should not judge, considering that we have been there. Plus, there is a golden reason why the spirits of a parent and a child are connected. Think of the possibility of in a previous life, the parent has shown some ingratitude to the spirit who is in this present life his child, and now they are blessed with the wonderful opportunity to learn with this experience. Chapter 14 of the Gospel According to Spiritism by Allan Kardec says, quote, Don't give up on a child who rejects a parent or treats a parent with ingratitude. It is not by chance that the child is this way, nor is it an accident that the child is under your care. Such reactions often reveal a dim intuition of the past, from which fact we can conclude that one or the other, the parent or the child, may have hated or harmed the other in the past. In fact, the current life may offer a great opportunity for the forgiveness or for redress." Unquote. A common mistake is when parents expect their child to pay them back for all the sacrifice they have made. Sacrifice and challenges come with the parenting job. It is part of the job description. A parent who truly loves his child does not expect anything in return. If he does, then it is not love, but selfishness, because true love is selfless. When a child shows ingratitude, it is important to keep in mind that this is not the only chance that a child has to learn. Everything has its time, and we need to be patient and understanding, realizing that it may take a little longer for a child's behavior to change and improve morally. The understanding comes with a spiritual knowledge and with the realization that a child will have plenty of opportunities to grow in several areas of his life. It does not happen all at once. But be assured that God sees all the parents' dedication, effort, love, and sacrifice made to his child. Here is another beautiful explanation from chapter 14 of the Gospel According to Spiritism. Quote, Where parents have done everything possible for the moral progress of their children, even if unsuccessfully, they have nothing to reproach themselves for, and their consciences can rest easy. For the pain that naturally results from the fruitlessness of their efforts, God has in a store a short delay. They will be able to finish the work they've already begun in another lifetime, and one day their ungrateful children will reward them with love. Unquote. Kardec Radio listeners, a child's ingratitude toward a parent is a sign of the imperfection of the spirit. But God provides many opportunities for this spirit to evolve through the plurality of existences. All the good work a parent has done to his child is never in vain. If you do not see the results yet, you are certainly planting the seed. So be patient. Trust the Creator. And remember that unconditional love 
has the power to touch and transform the hearts of all souls. Thanks for listening to Yes. And if you have any questions that would like us to answer in this segment, please email them to Kardec at KardecRadio.com. Dear listener, we hope you have enjoyed the show because the show is all about giving tools, instruction, clarifications so you can live a better life. It makes us all feel better and that's what the world needs. If you want more good news, I would recommend to you go to goodnewsnetwork.org and get to know about many good things that are happening around the world. Do not believe the mainstream news because, you know, it's not too healthy. They are saying half-truth because there is so much more happening in this world, so much goodness, and it's not being announced. But at goodnewsnetwork.org, as well as com. we are here sharing the good news. How about if now we tell you what's going to happen next week? Next week, we have a special program that uh, dedicated to science and the afterlife experience. It's a book that was written by the British Chris Carter. It's He's going to be here with us talking about how much evidence there is already in science proving about the immortality of the soul. And if you want to ask questions, just write to us at kardecradio.com. There is a form, contact form there, or at the email, kardec at kardecradio.com, and we'll be happy to share with you um, the, the, the response of your question. And you know, Divaldo Franco is coming to the United States February 21st, he's going to be in Chicago, 23rd to 24th in New Jersey, the 25th in San Francisco, and March 2nd and 3rd in Miami, Florida. If you want more information, write to us at Kardec Radio, and we'll tell you the whole itinerary. For now, we're going to wrap up with our prayer. And you may be asking, why? Prayer? What is this? A radio show? Yes, but it is a moment for us to deepen our hearts in the good vibrations and energies that our guardian angels, the good spirits, our loving master Jesus and God are sending to us. So right now, it's a special prayer. Kirsten DeMello has kindly uh, recorded the voiceover of a beautiful prayer by Mentor Druzo, written in the book Action and Reaction by Andre Luis Truchico Xavier. How about if now we do that very exercise that George Cow recommended to us? Practice stillness. Practice this moment of inner reflection. Let us then close our eyes and pray because the world needs a lot of prayer. God of goodness, Father of infinite love, you have created time as the tireless guardian of our souls, destined for your bosom. Strengthen us for the necessary renewal. You know our crimes and desertions. Grant us the blessing of pain and time to redeem them, and anoint us with the understanding of your laws so that we do not waste any opportunity to pay our debts. You have lent us the treasures of work and suffering as favors of your mercy, so that we may dedicate ourselves to our dolores, but just regeneration. We are prisoners of guilt, but we are looking for our freedom, helped by the breath of your love. O oh, Father, infuse us with courage so that our weaknesses may be forgotten. Inflame our spirits with sacred enthusiasm for the good, so that evil does not destroy our good intentions. 
and lead us along the pathway of self-denial so that our minds do not stray from you. May we pray like Jesus, the Divine Master, whom you sent to our hearts in order for us to accept your designs entirely. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. So be it. We then, in this beautiful, harmonious feelings, wish you many blessings, and we hope you come back for more, because Kardec Radio is here to nourish your soul. Thank you for listening to Kardec Radio, broadcasting live every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Email us and share your comments at www.cardecradio.com. Until next time, we wish you many blessings.